OK, so mobile I.O. virtualization. So the talk's going to be sort of in a, in a couple of parts. I'm going to talk first of all about um, the sort of set of devices and this sort of uh, the, the physical uh, hardware platform which characterizes a mobile device. Uh, um, I'm going to then look at the sort of virtualization techniques that are used um, for sort of I.O. virtualization in general, um, whether you're on a server or a PC or a mobile device, and sort of see how some of these apply in, in the mobile context. And then finally, uh, I'll, give, I'll provide some specific examples from VMware's uh, MVP hypervisor and talk about how we do IO virtualization there. So smartphone hardware. So the slide here sort of is, is exactly the same slide you saw on Monday, which Price presented, which just gives you an overview of you know, what uh, sort of a computer system looks like. And you know, at the top, you have things which you're probably now familiar, familiar with it, if you weren't already, things like the CPU and the MMU and the actual memory. And uh, Prash has spoken in sort of some length about how you go about virtualizing these components of the system. And then there are all these other parts of the system which uh, are, um, are also interesting, and they're in fact how our virtual machines do anything useful or sort of, um, in particular the mobile setting, sort of present the sort of mobile experience to the user. So there are things like network controllers or you know, USB controllers. Um, your CD-ROM, um, frame buffer to display the sort of uh, contents of the, the virtual machine and so on. And these, these are all the sort of components that we're interested in sort of um, uh, virtualizing and presenting up to our VM. So that's sort of what things look like at a very high level in general. On mobile devices, we see uh, sort, of a, sort of a unique set of devices on the, uh, on, uh, attached to the bus. Um, and that you don't really see in the PC space. Things like GPSs and cameras and so on. These uh, um, sort of are there because of this sort of convergence that we've seen in the past, you know, maybe half a decade, where once we had, you know, these different devices we carried around, which were discrete devices, things like a camera or an MP3 player and a phone for making phone calls. And they're all now sort of uh, on a single hardware platform and software platform, which is the smartphone or mobile PC. And there's been this sort of uh, you know, trend towards uh, increased integration. At the same time, there's been, you know, over the past half decade, there's been this huge sort of ramp up in both storage capacities you see on these devices, um, memory capacities, and sort of uh, processing power. In fact, really, there's nothing special about um, the electronics or the software in your mobile phone. People, you know, think it's so special because you know these are low power battery constrained devices. But in reality, um, you, we're at a different point in the Moore's law curve, and we, uh, these devices are sort of tracking along that. So if you look at uh, sort of the kind of hardware that you should expect to see in a phone, either in the market today or perhaps later on this year, it looks a bit like what you see in this slide here. These are fairly sophisticated uh, hardware platforms, probably um, dual or quad core, um, you know, clock speeds of over a gigahertz, probably a gigabyte of RAM. Uh, Maybe not right away today, but on some phones, and certainly towards uh, uh, further out this year, um, you know, um, in high resolution cameras, 4G uh, radio modems, so on. And it's not just uh, mobile for devices, actually. And uh, our talk has been largely about sort of smartphones, and today I'll be talking uh, about devices present on smartphones. But you know, everything that's being said here um, sort of also applies to tablets and smartbooks. These are all sort of under the hood in pretty much exactly the same uh, bits of hardware, just with a different chassis and sort of display and set of input methods. So if I, actually, if we dive under the hood and if you, you know, take your phone and you uh, pull, out, uh, pull off its cover and look under the battery at the PCB, you'll see a set of chips there. And most of these would be uh, either sort of um, let's say NAND chips uh, for storage or SOCs um, providing the functionality in your phone. So unlike you know, in your PC, when you uh, take off the, uh, the cover, you see a whole bunch of uh, various chips to do things like you know, your, your PCI controller and a separate card for your graphics controller and so on, and a memory controller. All of these things are integrated into a single die on a, on a typical uh, uh, mobile SOC. And you have on the, sa in the same die both the uh, uh, processor call, these ARM calls, which Prash spoke about on Monday. And in addition, you have uh, things like your memory controller, your USB controller, your hardware uh, graphics accelerator, DSPs, and so on, all present on that same die. In fact, in the same package, you might have uh, also um, your your uh, SD RAM, your memory. And so, in fact, on the same chip, you, you might have almost the entire uh, computer uh, compu uh, sort of system uh, on in, in, a, in a single package. 
Now, typically, there are multiple SSCs. These are ones which do uh, sort of like, let's say, radio functionality, and these are called like the baseband processors. We're not really going to talk about these today. What's really sort of of interest and in, you know, the, the, is the application SSC, and this is what runs your mobile operating system. So iOS or Android or whatever you happen to have running on your phone is running on the application SSC, and this characterizes the the experience that you know the user has with their uh, smartphone, and that's where we're uh, interested in sort of virtualizing um, the uh, devices. Mm -hmm.